Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time. So here we have a highly requested video where I will go over how my ultimate loot filter is working and how it's made is that you basically choose how strict you want it to be. So let's just dive in and take a look on what we have here. So the first two rules here will basically highlight general good items to use up to level 50 and will then be disabled after that. And that's around the point that we'll complete campaign. Then we have one to hide all the idols. We have one to hide all the Nor Medic and Rare items. And also one to show all exalted, unique and set items. And the next one will just highlight all items with a tier 7 on it. And for the next rule, this is for the Fractured Crown. This is a helm that you will have to craft to obtain. Using a Rune of Sentence on a Celestial Helm that has mana and also damage dealt to mana before health and also with 21 plus total affixes tier on it. So this rule will highlight when a Celestial Helm is dropped with those two modifiers on it. And it also has to be exalted as we do need to have one modifier with tier 6 or more to be able to get a total of 21 uh, FX tiers. And next personal item is special items that can be found around the world while doing the campaign. And it looks something like this for example. Here we have a uh, unique modifier there with cold penetration and lightning penetration. And next up we have experimental items and these drops from the exalted mage that you will encounter by doing monoliths. And this will show you when you get one of these mods as a tier 5 or more. And if you want you can also go in here and you can change this tier here to go lower or you can also just uh, disable the advanced option here. And now it will just show you whenever you get with the experimental mod on it uh, without the tier restriction. Next is for the normal gear and what I've done here is basically choose modifiers that are basically used for all classes. Stuff like health is something that you basically always want to have on most of your gear or moon speed for example. And the first rule here will show you items that have at least two good affixes on it and also both of those affixes need to have a tier 3 or more on both of them. And the next one same here but this will now be for three total affixes. And this will highlight items with a double tier 5 affixes on it and this will apply to all affixes. And here you can enable and disable however you like. For new cycle for example it can be nice to have all of these checked at start. But as you go further into the end game you can start and disable some of these rules to get it more strict. And then we have a new section that I recently added before doing this video. And this is for the late end game. This makes it so we now hide all exalted items. And the next one here will make it so we only see exalted items that now have double tier 6 or 7 modifiers on it. And also this one will highlight all the items with a tier of 7 as well. Next we go for idols and here first we are going for the smaller ones and basically here I managed to get it quite strict I feel and it will filter out tons of bad ones that we'll never use. First one is a standard one with vitality and resist on it, like the fist, necrotic void or poison resist. And then we have one with the small ones with health and also resist on it. We have a combined pool here with the double health modifiers and either armor, mana, ward retention or stun avoidance. And then we have these rules here, we have health regen and healing effectiveness and this is for some niche builds. We got the health regen here is for the shadow Glance set which scales damage from health regen and also the healing effectiveness works great for the paladin judgment build where you stack healing effectiveness for damage. And then we have these three nodes here, which is not enabled from the start, you have to enable them for yourself. But what they do, this will also show you idols with bleed and ignite or poison chance on it. 
and also with their corresponding damage types. So for Blade, for example, we also have physical damage. Uh, for Ignite, we have fire damage and poison is uh, poison. And the last one here is uh, for a new setup that I think might be nice to use and it's basically for the Warlock more specific as uh, it synergizes very well with stack inertial resist and for the build as I was planning on doing we also are in need of bleed chance. So this will highlight those idols for us. And then we go to the class specific idols and the first rule here will enable all those idols for you. And then we have the other ones here, which is more strict for each class and uh, we'll highlight those idols that I think is more worth picking up. And if you are going to disable this, I do recommend you to go and check out the class that you are playing. Uh, so you actually have the thing that you need checked in here. Um, we also have included mods like health and resist also here for some hybrid class specific idols. And the next part is for shattering class mods. So usually these class mods is uh, more rare to obtain and then it can be nice to shatter them or use a rune of removal to obtain uh, these uh, mods. And here I went and picked up some of those mods I feel are more worth shattering and there's also an option to enable uh, all of these at the top here and this will highlight now all class mods of a tier 5 or more on it. And lastly on the top here we have a rule that I added before 1.0 basically and uh, this will just highlight all those new class mods that was added in 1.0 just so we can see more easily what was added. And if you're like me and playing on Legacy, you probably already have tons of all the other class mods already. So this is just a help for that. But on the top here, we have a rule that will overwrite all other rules. And here you can just add freely whatever you'd like to. Uh, for example, I have a hybrid life here, uh, which is a very rare mod and is uh, probably good to shatter if you find one. So yeah, there was my ultimate loot filter. I hope this will help and hopefully this uh, will uh, make it easier to understand the filter overall. And you can find this by going to loot filters on Last Epoch Tools. And I will keep updating this filter and just making it better as we go. Uh, do keep in mind at the moment, if I do make a update, you will have to download the filter again. It's not going to be updated online like uh, for PoE, for example, with uh, those filters. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!